Hi, uh, today I will be talking about the photosynthetic ability of Elysia chlorotica and why I believe this makes the members of this species have the most intriguing adaptation for feeding. So first we're going to begin with what is the eastern emerald Elysia? Well, E. chlorotica is found in salt marshes from Florida to Nova Scotia along, along the North American coast. And it is a member of the phylum mollusca, which is identified by the features found here on the screen, muscular foot for movement, visceral mask, with, which includes most of their internal organs, a mantle, which is a fold of tissue dropping over the visceral mask from which the shell secretes from if a shell is present, and the radula, which is a strap-like organ used for feeding. Uh, the Eastern Emerald Elysia belongs to the clad Sacoglossa. As far as the phylogeny of it, um, it is a member of the class Gastropoda, which is found here off the branch of Cephalopoda, which is identifiable by its xenophil shell if there is one present and the torsion that takes place during a gastropod's life. Uh, the Elysia chlorotica feeds on a yellow-green algae known as Bacheria latoria, and an endosymbiotic relationship takes place here as the slug sequesters chloroplasts from the algae. Uh, because of this, they are known as solar power slugs because these slugs can actually use the chloroplast sequestered from the algae as an energy source uh, to undergo photosynthesis to continue their metabolism. Uh, they can use this for up to nine months, which is an extended amount of time to use chloroplasts, especially outside of algae and in a heterotropic or normally heterotropic organism. Uh, the radula is used to harvest the chloroplast as it scrapes and sucks it out from the insides of the Bacheri latoria. Here's just a, a diagram of how that process works exactly over here on the right side on step one, we have a close up of the mouth of Elysia chlorotica and the radula actually puncturing the cell wall of the algae. Here in the second one, you have the chloroplast being vacuumed up into the mouth of the Elysia chlorotica. And the third one just shows the chloroplast being embedded into the digestive tubules of the digestive tract in the Elysia chlorotica, which is where most of the photosynthesis takes place. Oh, and also, as you can see, its shape here is much like the leaf and as we all know surface area is a running theme in biology and it being shaped like this allows it to take in as much light as possible and also is a very good uh, camouflage from predators as it, as it essentially looks like a leaf. Formulates the function because well it looks like a leaf but also the cycloglossa clade have piercing radules and the algae that eats V. Latoria has a very thin cell wall, and these two things together allows the process known as kleptoplasty, which is still in the chloroplast from photosynthetic organisms, uh, very easy for Elysia chlorotica. Um, actually, 90% of the protein needed in the development of their young comes from the algal chloroplast. So it's very necessary that this endosymbiotic relationship takes place for Elysia chlorotica to be successful. It's also a very advantageous energy source for a mollusk without a shell and with very little mobility, such as a slug. I mean, it's difficult for them to get around. So them being able to photosynthesize allows them to have a fruit source immediately available to them at all times without having to go too far at all. Uh, moving forward, it is a very exciting organism because it raises many intriguing questions. Uh, namely, my favorite ones are the idea of the slug being able to generate proteins to keep the, chlor the chlorophyll uh, working inside the chloroplast and continuing to undergo photosynthesis that not very many organisms can do that and that alone is an amazing feat. But also why there's not any immune response to the foreign plastids in E. chlorotica's digestive tract is a question that can be looked at and researched to find some kind of practical use in uh, human immunology and our understanding on how our immune system may work. Uh, obviously, a ancestor of this clad would be great to understand because it's strange that the slug is so similar to the algal genome. I mean, it was uh, one study found that 52 genes in the 
uh, Elysia chlorotica's genome were identical to the uh, algae that they eat, the algae's genome, but 52 is, it's a decent number. Um, the data is difficult to uh, come by because, well, the slugs are difficult to find to begin with, but their food is difficult to raise and we don't know a lot about them. This is my reference list and I would just like to say thank you for listening and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, thank you. You all have a great day.